Welcome to the second part of the Key Full tutorial on EXQJS single page applications using their MVC framework. In the previous tutorial, we talked about the overall structure of our single page application, and in this tutorial, we'll go over the code that is actually used to power the single page application. So, as you can see here, I have a grid, and within that grid, I can edit a window. So, what we should see in our code is a mirroring of that. We'll have a view for my grid, a controller for my grid, a view for this edit window, a controller for the edit window. We'll also have a file for the model that is used by both this interface and the grid, as well as a store that creates essentially an array of those models. So if we switch over to our code, we can see this mirror structure perfectly. As far as the grid, that is encapsulated by this controller. I can easily tell this because I see references to edit, add, and delete, which were all the buttons that were on my grid. My form is encapsulated by form controller, and I can also tell this because there's the save, cancel, and form panel. In an ext.js controller, when it has a view that is used to represent it, you'll often see this refs. Refs is a way for our controller to grab a view component and find some sort of functionality to it. So what I would normally do is find the ref for the cancel button, pull it down, which I can tell is going to be a button whose ID is cancel button, and then on click do some sort of cancellation functionality. Same thing with this save. Now, those are my two controllers. My two views are form view, which is the window that pops up. As you can see, it's an ext window, has a very well defined ID, um, very well defined width and height. The view for my grid is this view.js file. And I can also tell it's that because I see an ext grid panel as the class that it's extending. When you create classes in ext, you'll often be extending classes that already exist within the ext.js framework. I mentioned that my grid is an ext grid panel. I want my view to have very specific properties of the grid panel. For instance, I need it to have these specific columns. I need it to have these specific buttons on the top. I do that by extending the grid and then adding in my own sort of configuration on top of that. Now, if I wanted to have a more specialized view than this, but I still wanted to share the code, I would be able to, in theory, extend this custom class that I wrote and mix in my own configurations. Configurations and ext extensions pile on top of each other. So if I just had an extension of this class and all I specified was a different width, it would inherit all of the properties of its parent, but just changing whatever it itself specified. Now, the other classes that are going to be involved in here are the user, which is my model. You'll notice that the model structure is very intelligible. It's one that has very well-defined fields, um, ID, which is some sort of, you can think of it as an auto-incrementing key on your database or some sort of unique identifier that says, hey, this is the user that I represent. It has a name, an email, and a phone. ext.js offers a lot of different types that your fields can be. So in this case, you know, name, email, and phone, those are all strings. I could also maybe have an age, which is represented as a floating point number, if I wanted to. I chose string just because they're the most flexible. If you don't specify a type, ext.js will do an auto type to where it'll just store in whatever data the middle tier or your endpoint gives it. I like defining types just to be sure, you know, I'm accepting the data that I'm really expecting to accept. And then after that, there's this user store, which you'll notice it references the model of my user, which is the field that we just saw. So in this small tutorial, what we've gone over is the overall structure of our code, and next we'll dive in and actually start playing with it a little bit.